So we're on to our second lesson on moments now. Last time we looked at a beam that was supported by pivots. This time we're going to look sort of a combination of pivots and of perhaps a few supports from the ceiling so that's being suspended now. So as an example, here we've got a uniform rod AB. It's suspended horizontally from the ceiling by means of two vertical light inextensible strings. So we've got XA and YB. Obviously because they're strings, we're going to have a tension in that string, which I'm going to call TA and a tension in the other string, which I'm going to call TB. Now, the reason I've used these small letters is because the strings aren't connected, so therefore we can't assume that the tension is the same. Looking then at the rest of what we've got here, um, we've got a rod AB, which we've already talked about here, has a mass of 6 kilograms and its length is 1.4. Okay, and we always, as it's a, a uniform rod, know that it's in the middle. Okay. So here is the 6 kilogram weight, which comes out to be 6G. And because it's in the middle, we know it's going to be 0.7 metres from the end. Obviously 0.7 from the other side as well. I'm going to try not to clutter up the diagram too much. OK, then we've got a particle of mass 10 kilograms is attached at C. So coming down from C, we've got 10G. And we're told that AC is 0.3. So from here to here is 0.3. OK, so now we're ready to do a few equations to start working out the tension in each of the strings. So I'm going to start off by resolving vertically. So I'm going to have... Right, 10G disappeared. So I'm going to have TA plus TB equals 16G going down. OK, so that's my first equation. Then I'm going to have a look at the moments. Now, because I want to make my life easy for myself, I'm again going to take it round one of the points that has got a force so that I'm negating that force. So I'm negating the unknown in my choice at A. So I'm going to take moments about A. So looking here, I can see that both the 10G and the 6G are going to pull it around in a clockwise direction. So on my clockwise side, I've got 10G times by 0.3 is vanished too. So times by 0.3. And I've also got my 6G, which I know is halfway down, so that's 0.7. That's going to be equal to my anti-clockwise moments. And the only place that's going to make it anti-clockwise is this tension here. So that's going to be TB. And it's a long way from A. It's the full length of the beam, which is 1.4. OK. So straight away from that, I'm going to be able to work out TB. So double check that you're using your calculator correctly. 10 times 9.8 times 0.3 plus the second moment minus, sorry, divided by 1.4 and that's going to give us our tension of 50.4 newtons. OK, so there's one value. All we've got to do after that, as we did last week, is just substitute this value of TB back up into our resolved equation there. So with that in mind, TA is going to be the 16G minus what we found for TB. And that comes out to be 106.4 newtons. And that's it for that question. OK, so as we said, last week we did horizontal beams which were supported on two pivots. We've just had a look at horizontal beams which are suspended from the ceiling. This is our last type now, which is a horizontal beam which is sort of between pegs. So looking at these pegs here, that peg A, as it's above, it can only provide a force downwards. That's going to be RA. OK, similar thing with C, it can only provide a force upwards, RC. So the pegs basically push it in the direction towards the beam. OK, uh, so looking at the question now then, we've got a body of mass 65 kilograms attached at the end B. So this is 65 G for its weight going down. OK, um, it's a uniform rod of length 6 metres. So that means that the mass of the beam is right in the middle, 3 metres Okay, so it's that uniform word that tells us that it's right in the middle. 
And we're told that this mass is 40, so we've got 40 g going down there. The rod's held horizontally in equilibrium by those pegs that we just talked about. And we're also told that between A and C, it's 1.2 metres. So that might help us out later on. OK, first up, we are asked to write down the moment of the reaction force A, so this force here, about, firstly, the point A. So we can see from that, we know how to calculate moments. It's force times distance. So this is RA times a zero distance, because it's actually at A. So RA times zero, which is obviously zero. So that's our first question. Second one, we're asked to calculate the moment of the same force, but this time about the point C. So this time we're doing RA times by the distance from C, which we're told is 1.2. So that just comes out to be 1.2 RA. OK, really straightforward once you know what you're doing, but just try and make sure that you're looking out for that language. If you're asked to write down the moment, look about what force is it and what point are you doing it about. On to part B then. We're going to find the forces exerted on the rod at A and B. So basically, what are the reaction forces at A and at C? This we're going to treat in exactly the same way to what we've been doing so far. So we're going to start off by resolving vertically. OK, so resolving vertically, upwards we've got RC, and downwards we've got RA and 105G in total. So it's actually going to come out to be 105G. OK, so that's one equation. Now we're going to take some moments. So let's try and take moments about A so that it gets rid of the reaction force A, so we've got one less thing to worry about. So going clockwise... We've got this force going clockwise and this one, whereas RC is going anti-clockwise. So moments about A, 40G, and as that 40G, because we know it's the mass that's in the middle, that's 3 metres away. And then the 65G at B is right the other end, so that's times by 6. Anti-clockwise then, we've already discussed we've got RC, so it's going to be RC times 1.2. We can use that equation to find ourselves the value of RC. So there's pretty much nothing different in this to what we've been doing so far, apart from thinking about which way is the force acting. And in this case, we've got 4,165 newtons as that force on C. And that sort of makes sense, really, because all of this is pulling it down. So RC is pretty much the only thing holding it up. You're expecting it to be quite big. Now we can sub that into our formula above, this resolve vertically formula, and that's going to give us our RA value. So if we subtract 105 times 9.8 from what RC is, that's going to give us our RA value, which is 3,136 newtons. And that's that question done. So pretty much this week we're just doing same as last week when there were supports, but this time you've got to think about, does the reaction force go upwards, does the reaction force go downwards? If you've got any trouble figuring out which way it is, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, try holding a ruler and put your fingers in the middle of sort of where you're taking the moments about and physically push the ruler in the same way as the force to help you out. We'll have a look at this in the lesson as well. Good luck. <laughs>